As you remember, we're on a series on the book of Proverbs, on the book of Proverbs. And so I want to go to our scripture today, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse uh, 23. Um, as you know, we are on this series and we're reading the whole book of Proverbs in 31 days. So by today, you should be on uh, chapter 7. And uh, if you haven't signed up or you're not doing it uh, yet, you can also go. We have a QR code there. I apologize for the confusion. There's that QR code, and it's going to take you to the Bible app, and we can go through uh, this 31-day uh, journey together. So by today, you should be on chapter 3. If you're not, you can quickly uh, catch up. So today, we're going to be talking about Proverbs ch chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says this. Above all else, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Has anyone ever done something to you, and you're like, where did that come from? Or like, like a reaction, or like, like someone was unkind to you, or they cursed at you, or, you know, they made some gesture toward you, or they were like passive aggressive toward you, and you're like, where did that come from? And it's like this weird thing to where like it seems so out of character that you're like, I don't understand why that person reacted that way or why that person did that. Um, at a job I had a few years back, I had someone that just, the reaction that this person had toward me was so out of character that it seemed like I was talking to a different person. Where did that come from? Now, what I want to talk about this morning is not where the other person's reaction came from, but have you ever been in a situation like that where you do something and you're like, man, I don't know where that come, came from. I don't know where that reaction came from. I don't know where that outburst came from. And so this is a confession time for me. All right, you guys ready for confessions of a pastor? So this was, <laughs> you're like, yes. Uh, <laughs> It's gossip a little bit. Um, this, happened, this happened like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And I'm going to share with you a story that I am not proud of. So as some of you know, I grew up in Chile as a missionary. And uh, in Chile, in South America, uh, cars are very small and parking spaces are very small. And so I parked my car underneath, uh, it was a parking structure uh, of a mall. So I parked my car and then I go up to the mall and I do the thing that I need to do. And then I come, my wife is like, don't share that story. And then I go back to my car, and then there's this car that was parked so close to me that it was literally impossible, not hard, impossible for me to get into my car through the driver's seat. And so I'm like, I go around, I'm so angry, it's summer, it's hot, and I'm, I walk in through the, through the passenger seat, and I have to go over, and I sit back down, and I'm pulling out, and I'm so angry. I am so angry that I get out of my car, and I go to the car, and I unscrew the gas cap, and I just toss it as far as I could, t I, I could toss it. That's your pastor. But I'm driving away. I'm driving away, and in my mind, I'm like, like, what was I thinking? Like, how could I do that? Like, literally, my reaction was, where did that come from? That was so completely out of character. Have you ever gone through something like that? Have you ever said something, and then the minute you say it, you wish you could just, oh, grab that word and put it back in your mouth, but it's too late? Or you're typing something, uh, you're gonna, or you're texting something, and you push send, and you're like, what? how could I do that? And you're trying to undo, there's no way to do it, it's too late. Have you ever had that happen in your life? You didn't want to react that way. You didn't want to say what you said. That was not me. I was caught up in the moment. And so sometimes you do things that you don't want to do and the things that you do want to do, you don't do. Sound familiar? The apostle Paul actually went through this in Romans chapter 7, verse, I'm going to do 15 and 19. Romans chapter 7, he's literally saying this, the apostle Paul, I do not understand what I do. For what I, what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do. That I do. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep doing. How's that for a tongue twister? Who can relate? You know, sometimes we have this. We don't understand why we do what we do, but we can't stop doing it. So the question is, what do we do? When what we do, we don't want to do. 
The problem is we tend to approach this in the wrong way. We tend to approach this in, in, in church or in, you know, our Christian walk. We tend to approach this with an external tool. Like we go to something external to try to solve something internal. And we've talked about how this simply doesn't work. We're like, do better, be better, try harder. And that might work for a while, but it's not going to stick. You've heard me say before that, that I never want you to walk away from church with just a to-do list because that's literally not the gospel. If you walk away from church with a to-do list, that is not the gospel because the gospel is not about what you do. It's about what God did, the finished work that Jesus did on the cross for us. So it's very important for us to understand this because my temptation as a pastor is to, is to send you home with three steps on how to do, be a better husband, three steps on how to be a better wife, three steps on how to be a better friend, better son, better citizen. But this is not psychology that we have to offer here. This is not psychiatry that we have to offer here. This is not self-help that, that we have to offer here. You see, a psychologist is, is going to give you, is going to give you, you know, therapy. A, a psychiatrist is going to give you a pill. A, a self-help is going to try to find tools within yourself to be able to solve your problem. None of those things are bad, by the way. But that's not why you're here, and that's not why that's not what we have to offer. Because I believe that we have a God that is so powerful that He can bypass all those things and go straight to the source. This is the God that we serve. And so, if we want to answer the question of where did that come from? Where did that reaction come from? You know, we've all been there. Let's listen to what Jesus says. Matthew 15, 19 says this. This is Jesus talking. He says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. The heart. And then Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings out evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You see, there's a source from where everything comes from. It's the Bible's saying this. What we say, think, react, do, text, post, all those things, there's a source from where all of that comes from, and that source is our heart. You see, it's very important for us to understand the source, because when we understand the source, then we will understand what it is that we have to do to be able to solve what's going on, meaning that if we don't know where the problem comes from, then we won't know what to do. Jesus went through this over and over with the Pharisees. He went over and over this with the Pharisees. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 23, starting in verse 25. He says this. He says, he says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and self-indulgence. He says, Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the laws and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, uh, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. And so Jesus is using two examples here to talk to the Pharisees. He's saying, you guys are like, like you know, uh, like a whitewashed tomb. He says, hey, you guys look great on the outside. You're nice and, you know, beautiful, right? But on the inside, we all know that there's full, you're full of death. There's nothing that inside of you, you are dead. He compares them also to a dirty cup that you look at the outside of the cup and it looked beautiful. It's like nice and clean, but then you look inside, it's like, oh, that thing's moldy. That thing hasn't been washed in like a month, right? But on the outside, it just seems like everything is great. So the question is, what is Jesus pointing out here? What is he saying? He's saying, Pharisees, you guys look great on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of death. There's nothing inside of you that is alive. You just have the appearance of being clean. Do you guys know why Jesus rejected the Pharisees so much? I've heard people say that it's because of their sinfulness. It was not because of their sinfulness. Because if that were the case, then we would all be rejected by Jesus. It wasn't because of their sinfulness. It was because of their hypocrisy. And a hypocrite literally means an actor. 
Imagine, imagine you're putting on a, a face, like a, like a mask over you, not like a mask like for COVID, but like a, something that's covering your face. Imagine that, right? And so what he's saying is this, that's not the real you. You're giving the appearance of something that is not actually true, which is so interesting because if you compare it, if you compare the perspective that Jesus had with the Pharisees and you compare it to the perspective that he had with the woman caught in adultery, it is so interesting because everyone saw from the outside that the Pharisees, looked, they look great. So the assumption was, since you look great on the outside, you're probably looking pretty good on the, on the inside. And when they saw the woman caught in adultery, they're like, oh, she's filthy on the outside. She must be filthy on the inside too. But Jesus bypasses both things. He goes directly to the heart. He knows what's going on. He knows when you're faking it. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. He's talking about the, the importance of the heart. That's why he can go to the woman caught in adultery and say, yes, go sin no more, but neither do I condemn you. He's looking straight to the heart. That's why he can look at King David and he can say, in spite of you committing adultery with one of your soldiers and then sending off your soldier to be in the front lines to be killed so that you can marry his wife, in spite of all that, guess what? You're a man after God's own heart. What? He can see directly to the heart. You see, the point I'm trying to make this morning is that the heart is the most important thing. God saw the heart of David. Jesus saw the heart of the woman, and he sees your heart too. When Jesus sees you, he doesn't see what others see or what others criticize. When Jesus looks at you, he doesn't see what you see or what, you, what it bothers you, yourself about you from the outside. He sees beyond that. He, says, he sees directly to your heart because that is where everything flows from. Here's the point. Jesus always started with the heart. And so should we. This is why. Proverbs 4.23. Let's read it again. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Do you want to know? Why you do what you do? Your heart. Do you want to know why you reacted the way you reacted? Your heart. Do you want to know why you said what you said? Your heart. Why did you decide that? Your heart. Why did you text that? Your heart. Why did you post that? Your heart. Everything that you do flows from your heart. That's why this verse does not say, be better, do better, try harder. It does not say that. It says, guard your heart. Whatever's coming out was in there. Everything that comes out is because it was there before. And the only reason why it's there is because at some point you let it in. Maybe you left your post for a little while and something got in there and then it's coming out. And I, guess what? You didn't guard your heart. That's why that came out. Whatever you do, don't do, react, say, this is where it comes from. We have to guard our heart. What does a guard do? He keeps it safe doesn't just let anything in. So the question I want to ask you this morning, what is flowing out of your life right now that you don't like? What is it that's coming out of your life right now that you wish you could change? Like, I don't like that about myself. I've been reacting in a certain way. I've been thinking in a certain way. I've been doing things in a certain way. Like, I don't like, I feel like that's not even who I am or who I should be. The answer is not try harder next time, be better next time, do more. No, wrong approach. It says guard. So the question is, what are you letting in? Because nothing can come out that wasn't there in the first place, and nothing can be there that you didn't let in. I'm asking you to do a self-assessment. Here's what I want us to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to close with this. I want us to do a self-assessment. This is going to be very practical. When we talk about finances or I'm counseling someone or doing marriage counseling and we get to the finance part, one of the things that I like to know is how are your finances? Like, how are you doing? Oh, great. How, how, do, you, how do, you, do you spend your money on like things that are unnecessary? No, no, we're pretty good. Okay, that's fine. So let me ask you this. Let me, let me, let me ask you to do a self-assessment of your finances for one month. And here's, here's all I'm going to ask you to do. This is rhetorical, by the way. I'm trying to make another point. Is that you're going to write down everything that you spend for a whole month. Just write it down. Don't, 
Don't think about changing anything, just write it all down. And then at the end of the month, I want you to go through everything and I want you to do two categories, essential and non-essential. And what happens when you go through all of that is you realize that there are so many things that were non-essential that you didn't even realize that you've spent your money on. Coffee that you could have made yourself, you know, uh, something that you ordered on Amazon. And so there's this whole list, list and there's a number at the end. You're like, man, I had no idea that I spent that much money on things that are non-essential. Here's what I want to ask you to do with your life. I want you to do the same thing with the hours that you spend in a month. I want you to think about it. Because the hours that you spend, how you spend your hours in a month is going to be a reflection of what you're letting into your heart. How are you spending your time? What are you doing? How much time are you spending on TV? How much time are you spending on your phone? How, mu how much time are you spending quality time with your family? How much time are you spending in prayer? How much time are you spending reading the scriptures? How much time are you spending with friends? What type of friends are you spending your time with? How much time are you spending on work? What podcasts are you listening to? How much time are you spending on politics, on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Go through your whole month. I'm not even, I promise you, I'm not even telling you to change anything. But if the result of what, if, after you, you add everything up and you're happy with that and you're like, I think I'm spending my time in a way that honors God, that's great. I'm saying I want for your life to be a reflection of what you want to, to have in your heart. So I want to ask you to think about that. I'm going to end with this. Mark 2.17 says, On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So my question is, why, why are you here? Why are you here? I'm not, I'm not questioning why you're here. I'm asking you, why are you here? You see, the church is supposed to be a hospital in a way, like a spiritual hospital. And I think that some of you, maybe many of you, you're coming into this hospital with a broken arm, like your arm is just falling off and there's blood everywhere. And you're like, ah, just give me an aspirin, I'll be fine. So my question is, if you're hurting, if you're legitimately hurting, and you need a doctor, a spiritual doctor to heal you deeply, this is why Jesus came. And so when I give you these ideas and thinking about your life and what you're letting inside of your heart, let the power of Jesus heal you. Let him heal you. Don't just go for a quick fix. Sometimes maybe you come to church and you're just looking for a quick fix, and I get it. I was looking online the other day. There's, this, there, there's these fake abs that people do. They like, they, there's like a tanning thing that you put fake abs. I'm like, that's not even, you didn't do any work. Like, that's not fair. You can't do that. And so in a way, I'm thinking about, it's a weird example, I know. But in a way, that's what it is. It's what it is. Let the power of Jesus heal you from the inside out. But there are these steps that we need to take. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for these moments that we share. We thank you for your love and your mercy. And we recognize that, that you have come for the sick. And we're all sick in a way. That's why we need you. I pray, God, that we will guard our hearts. That we will recognize that whatever comes out of our lives, whatever flows out of our lives, comes from our heart. I pray that we will make our lives count that the things that we do with our time, what it is that we're letting in, that everything that, we'll do, that we do will be honoring to you. And so I pray, God, that we will stand our ground, that we will keep our guard up and let into our hearts the things that you've called us to let in. And that our life, what flows out of our heart, will be a reflection of that, Lord. We thank you so much for these moments. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.